Hi guys, hope everyone is well, welcome to Overlord, light novel, enjoy listening. If you like my content join me on Patreon, where you can find more and exclusive novels, also you can leave a donation by clicking the super thanks button, thank you very much for your support. Special Chapter Drama of the Three Ladies In the past, when they were creating the Great Tomb of Nazareth, the 41 guild members known as the Supreme Beings implemented all sorts of unique designs into each level. For example, the forest in one level, the glacier in another. It was akin to sealing 10 unique worlds inside the Great Tomb. So what was the unique theme of the ninth level? If it had to be compared to something, the best example would be a sacred castle. Within that level was the personal room of the one who supervised all of the guardians within the great tomb, the highest ranked of all the NPCs, the succubus of pure white albedo. Her room was one of the few presidential suite-like rooms reserved for the supreme beings. However, only one supreme being was left. Instead of a room, it would be more adequate to call it a home. A professional-grade grand piano lay in one corner of the living room, and all sorts of plants decorated the interior. There were multiple kitchens and bedrooms and two bathrooms. From the grand art features to the wallpaper, the room's design was elegant but not overwhelming. Anyone who took in the sights might be so moved that they would sigh in awe. Still, it would make impressing everyone just as difficult. This was especially true now, given that beside the table, covered in a white tablecloth, was a girl with her arms crossed and her chin on the table. Her mood was anything but cheerful. A cold brilliance resided within her half-open eyes, but her depressed mood showed clearly through her beauty. After entering this room, the vampire guardian of the first to third levels, Shaltir, asked a question of her colleague, who had stayed in the same position all this while. Aura, what is the matter? You look just like the bugs that went against Ain Sama's will, that we tore apart. The one who answered wasn't the dark elf guardian of the sixth level, who was being queried, but the owner of the room, Albedo. A gentle light shone through her golden pupils as she watched Aura with gentle eyes. Although Albedo's gaze was like being in the presence of a goddess, Aura did not look happy about being subjected to it. She must be tired. Unlike a devil like me, Aura is a dark elf, so sleep is necessary right? I see. Shaltir, who didn't understand what Aura was really thinking about, nodded in agreement. I get it, Aura is still a kid, so it's only normal that she looks bad after staying up all night. By the way, Albedo, devils don't need to eat or sleep, but you can do so if you wish. Why is that? Gluttony and sloth. We have always been able to indulge in the seven deadly sins of old. It is not very useful though. The buff effects from food don't work on devils. Even expensive items will just go into the trash. Sigh. Aura sighed loudly enough for them both to hear. The two of them, who were going off topic, looked at Aura at the same time. Aura looked at them unhappily through her half-closed eyes. It's midnight right now, but I got enough sleep. I'm thinking about something else. Earlier when I met Demiurge, I was told Aura, keep a tight rein on those two so they won't go berserk. How weird. Aura mimicked the serious tone of Demiurge, and the image of that serious guardian of the seventh floor, a devil who often worked outside of Nazareth on Ain Sama's orders, came to their minds. Yup, that is weird. Right? Albedo nodded in agreement. The only one who can hold my reins is Ain Sama. Suspecting that she heard it wrong, Aura cupped her long elf ears, to be certain. You are right. Ignoring the confused Aura, Shaltir voiced support for the opinion. Holding a whip in one hand while riding on top, that's the best. And as the whip lashes out, there has to be a ball in the mouth. Their conversation is heading in a weird direction, a pervert meeting another pervert might trigger something bad. Can someone please deal this? That will probably be me, Aura concluded grimly, speaking out before the blushing albedo with her wavering eyes could comment. You got it wrong. Or rather, what he meant was for me to babysit you too. But why me? 
That's right, isn't it weird to give the responsibility to you, who is the youngest here? I know, how about letting me take on this job? Albedo stuck her chest out as she was saying that. Shaltir did the same as if to oppose her. Seeing the ample bosom that didn't match Shaltir's apparent age, Aura understood its true nature and felt sorry for her. Doesn't that feel uncomfortable? Uncomfortable? Aura who asked the question drooped her shoulders weakly, sighing like a middle-aged man. Never mind. Anyway, why did you ask us to gather here? That's true, I don't know why too. What happened? Actually. I have something I need to discuss with everyone. Normally, the highest-ranking NPC, the Guardian Overseer, would only summon the floor guardians for matters of highly important matters. That, however, was what an uninformed person would think. Aura, who understood Albedo's nature, averted her eyes and reached for a triple-layered cake, sparkling with silver light at a corner of the table. She stuffed the large piece of cake made by the head chef into her mouth as a means of escaping reality. Aura knew this trip to Albedo's room was a waste of time and consoled herself in this way. Wait, Aura, are you listening? Yes yes, I'm listening, just spit it out. Aura didn't stop her hands, slowly filling her plate with cakes, taking care to not let them fall over. If they did, she wouldn't be able to squeeze the whipping cream onto her plate. You are not taking this seriously at all, Albedo's tone was displeased, and Aura stopped as she became aware of her companions. She certainly hadn't stopped because her plate was full. You can discuss with Shaltir too, right? What a pain, really. Well, what's the matter? Actually, it is about my armor. Armor? What is wrong with it? Before I begin, I would like to understand how much you know about my armor. Aura and Shaltir exchanged looks briefly and said. The armor created by a supreme being? I heard that is the only divine class magic item you possess. Magic items were categorized according to the amount of data they held in other words, the magic power of this world. Starting from lesser class, medium class, greater class to the highest class of items, divine class. Yes, both of you are right. My armor, Hermes Trismegistus is a divine class magic item. However, Albedo took out a sturdy and tough-looking suit of black armor out of thin air. The armor stood beside her with a soft metallic clang. Shaltir, you can use item appraisal spells, right? Could you cast them on this armor? No problem. Shaltir stood up from her seat and walked towards the armor. She activated her magic, but frowned right after that. What the, she coughed. It is a divine class item, but the performance is. Could it be, it was enchanted with magic disruption spells? No. My armor specializes in physical defense, but has no other abilities. Aura felt that this was really troubling. Since Albedo had the role of a tank in combat, she had to fend off the opponent's attacks and thus she was focused on defense. However, having no other abilities would be a problem too. For example, resistance against fire or ice, or general resistance against magic. There could also be other useful abilities, such as strength enhancement or reduction in mana consumption. Compared to pure stats enhancement, such abilities would be stronger, but. What of it, Albedo? Complaining about the armor bestowed onto you by the supreme beings. Don't joke about that sort of thing. Not showing reverence to the supreme beings was unforgivable. Shaltir's eyes became sharp and dangerous when Aura finished her words. No, don't misunderstand me. I didn't say that. First of all, this armor suits me the best. This is my trump card, no, I have something that could be called that too. After gaining job levels with prerequisites that were a pain to fulfill, one could learn a unique skill. They were usually known as trump cards. For example, Shaltir was able to create an avatar with the same stats as herself. By the way, Aura didn't have such levels, so she didn't possess trump cards like these. My trump card is the special skill that transfers the damage I take onto the armor. By using this skill, 
I can avoid one attack, no matter how powerful it is. Yes, I can escape unscathed from even the most powerful super tier spell that Ain Sama is proudest of. However, the damage will be absorbed by the armor instead, and it might break from that blow even if it was enchanted with strengthening spells. This skill is powerful, but the usage is kind of awkward. Basically, magic items such as armor would not be destroyed unless they were targeted by specific spells. Also, metal was durable and highly resistant to to pure energy attacks like lightning, flame, or ice. Hence, armor made from metal was hard to destroy. Which meant that metallic armor had high defense but low HP. And so, if Albedo diverted the damage to the armor, it would ignore the armor's defense, which meant that it would be unexpectedly easy to break the armor. Her defense would fall drastically after the armor was destroyed, and it would make her an easier target. It might be called a trump card, but that was just an empty title, to buy time. That was how Aura felt about it. Yes, my combat potential will plummet if my armor breaks. However, Shaltir who appraised this armor should have realized it. My armor was made with this skill in mind. Also, most trump cards can only be used once a day, but mine can be used three times a day. Just enhancing it with magic will increase its HP, but it wouldn't be able to survive three attacks right? Shaltir reacted faster than Albedo who was about to answer Aura's query. I see, so that's it. Aura, who suddenly felt a chill from the giggling Albedo, turned sharply towards Shaltir. Shaltir who understood what was going on started explaining. That might look like a single piece of armor, but it is actually three pieces in one. You could call it triple layer armor. Aura uttered as she finally understood. Which meant that the armor would take three attacks to break. That's how it is, Aura. I'm glad you can understand. I get it, an armor made specifically for Albedo's trump card. As expected of the item crafted by the supreme beings. Aura suddenly thought of the problem. So, what's wrong with it? Like I said, calm down. We're getting to it now. But first, let me talk about the armor. The innermost layer is an armor in liquid form, which fits my body perfectly, and enhances my physical abilities. Next, would be a full-body armor layer, like an undershirt. And finally, the outermost layer covers the inner layers and boosts their defenses. Okay. And so, the order of them breaking would be from the outer layer. Albedo took a deep breath and Aura gulped. What could the problem be? My skin exposure level doesn't increase when my armor breaks. Aura wondered if she misheard something. Ignoring Shaltir who was commenting, I see, Aura leaned forward to be sure of what she was hearing. You understand, right? Skin exposure should go up after the armor breaks. I don't want to show my skin off to those bugs, but as someone who works closely with Ain Sama, there are plenty of opportunities to defend him as a vanguard. In that case, armor that increases skin exposure is necessary to entice Ain Sama. Albedo revealed the foolish side of her. Magnificent. Albedo, you are absolutely right. The number of idiots increased. Aura pitted her earlier self. Why did I take them so seriously just before? Idiots. She looked at the stupid duo with narrowed eyes, as if she was watching them from afar. This is the only armor I have. I don't have things like bikini armor or skin-tight armor. Well, I have something like that from the clothing Pararoncino Sama gave me. However, I don't expect much from them in terms of defense. Albedo inhaled sharply, and a strange expression that blended passion and professionalism appeared on her face. That won't do. While we are servicing Ain Sama, we also have to act as his shields. It won't do unless both objectives are met. Her idiocy returned in no time. Do you understand, Shaltir? Your armor lacks skin exposure, too. What we should strive for is sexiness and performance, an armor that serves these two purposes at the same time. It did not matter, but it would give her a headache in the future if Aura ignored this now. She should get these irritating matters out of the way as soon as possible. 
that kind of armor. No matter what kind of armor, attacking the exposed part of the body will deal more damage. But. If there are armor pieces that look like string bikinis, it would increase the chance of making babies with Ain Sama. Albedo erected her fingers into a V sign. That isn't armor. Just something that looks like it. How about thinking about the problem from another angle? An invisible armor will do nicely, just covering the important parts would be enough. Where do you want to walk to, you two? No, it won't be good no matter where they walk Aura thought as she shook her head and sighed softly. She just wanted to wash her hands of this topic. Let Shaltir take care of it, then. Asking in her heart to a comrade who was not present to help, Aura poked her fork into the cake on her plates. The cake melting in her mouth enticed her with its sweetness, relieving the fatigue in her brain. Delicious. Her companions, who had progressed from the development of the armor to a passionate discussion of armor theory, faded away from Aura's sight. However, she still empathized with the craftsmen who had to make this armor. Can someone inject some common sense into the brains of these two? It can't be helped, and asking Ain Sama would be rude too. After finishing off a slice of cake in three bites, Aura reached for the next piece. End of the special chapter